Polo used to like slang dogs. He used to come and be like, yo, you want to buy a pit bull, Rottweiler, what you want? So he had that like entrepreneurial mentality, like coming to my neighborhood, slanging freaking battles like dogs and shit. So I'd be like, yeah, that's my friend Polo. He got all the dogs. I forgot about that. <laughs> so I forgot about that. So Polo, used to, he was like, yo, Will, pet bulls are old school food, Sharpays. That's the fancy <laughs> pet bulls. So I'm like, all right, what do you want to do? He was like, look, we're going to take this Sharpay. We're going to go to Venice Beach, and the chicks are going to like us because I got this fancy Sharpay. Watch, you'll see. And so <laughs> we would go to freaking, like, Venice Beach with the freaking Sharpay dog, and we like, and all the girls, he'd be like, ah, I look at the dog. He'd be like, yeah. Well, an entrepreneur is really somebody that has a vision, fearless, and has ability to withstand all the cynicism, skepticism, criticism, the ups and downs and roller coasters and comes out of it with more knowledge or executing that idea, or stopping it and moving on to the next thing. That's an entrepreneur. Whether you're an entrepreneur and you, you're a musician and you've, you, you, everyone told you no, but you kept on building and building and building until you built that audience, or you're a fashion designer and couldn't really find yourself being sold at stores and you started selling it through your trunk or through your garage and then next thing you know you're in malls or going direct to consumer or you're a manager and record companies didn't really like the artists you were messing with and then you figured out a path to get in front of a large audience and adopt that audience. An entrepreneur is anybody that figures out the way through the maze. There's a laundry list of philanthropic endeavors that I could list here. I'm just going to shout out a few. Uh, we have I Am Angel Foundation, I Am Home Fund, I Am STEAM, I Am Scholarship. There's so many others. Do you feel a responsibility to give back through community-driven initiatives? So I come from the projects in East LA. We were the only black family in an all-Mexican neighborhood. And it was beautiful growing up in East LA, Boyle Heights. And, uh, and in the 80s and the 90s, if you were like, you know, in East LA, blacks and Mexicans didn't get along in the 80s. But in my neighborhood, they thought I was like Panamanian or Dominican. So they didn't, because my whole family, like part of my family spoke fluent Spanish. So they were like, I really like, where's your mom? Like, oh, she's over there. I really, ven aquí. I really, mira, mira. And that's how I grew up around that neighborhood. So when Black Eyed Peas became successful, we would always do like these benefits. And one day I was like, yo, bro, like, we're always helping out other communities. What about East LA? When are we gonna go back to my neighborhood? We're going, helping everybody else's shit out. Like, my neighborhood's still fucked up. And so I was like, fuck it, I'm just gonna go back to my neighborhood myself. So I went and started the I Am Angel Foundation. I started with 65 kids. Um, and I brought computer science and robotic skill sets to my neighborhood. Yes, um, I believe Joe has some photos that we can so show here. That was 11 years ago. A couple ago. photos. That was 11 years ago. Now we've sent kids to Brown, Dartmouth, Stanford. Todo Mexicanos. <laughs> Mira, mi familia están aquí. So I've sent kids to Stanford, to Dartmouth, to UCLA, to USC, to Georgetown. Um, now I have. Um, Last year, we had 1,500 kids, and the LAUSD acknowledged the work that we were doing, and now we serve 15,000 students, and 400 schools across LA have my robotics program. It's unbelievable. Yes, a round of applause for that. Joe, I believe hey, we have me, one let other let photo. Let me just add to that. Let me just add to that. So you were actually doing philanthropy before you were successful. If you recall, when the Black Eyed Peas were still a startup band, you would, uh, you would come and say, hey, let's do something for the kids in the poverty-stricken areas. And we did toy drives. Yeah. We did canned food drives. This was while you guys were still playing venues that only fit like 100 people. Like, Dragonfly only fits like 100 people. Because my mom, my mom, that's what my mom does. Like, there's kids that would come up to me and be like, hey, Willie, your mom took care of me when I was like five years old. Like, 
um, because my mom was a, an after school teacher at Costello Park. And, and my uncle is a basketball coach at Costello Park. So right there in Costello Park, you have 8th Street and Vario Nuevo. And these two gangs, like, go, go at it. And so my mom and my uncle would teach the kids, you know, when they're little ones from 8th Street, all like the, the veteranos from 8th Street, their kids, my, they, my, my mom would take care of them. And then the veteranos from v &E, my mom would take care of those kids. So it was like the, the peace for the community, Costello Park. And so I, I saw like the impact that my mom had on the kids in the community. And like I said, you know, we were maybe three black families. And my mom was like, we were like the safe, they kept us safe. Mm -hmm. And so I saw what my mom and my uncle did for the neighborhood. And I just want to make my mom proud because even when I moved out of the projects, my uncle and my mom still worked there. I'm like, Ma, we got a, we got a house now in Sherman Oaks. So I say like, I was like, Ma, we, I moved you from the drive-bys to the rabbis. Now, now we live like right where the Jews are at. She was like, but our heart is still in East LA in Boyle Heights and that's where I wanna go. So my mom still worked there. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do my piece and do my part and you know, continue the work that my, my grandma started, then my mom and my uncle. And now we have the I Am Angel Foundation and it's pretty feed me.